Viruses are intriguing biological entities. Are they living? When did they originate? How do they evolve? Are they influencing the long-term evolution of cellular organisms? And how can we best combat and study viruses? These are all pressing biological questions that demand attention in this age of interdisciplinary research and technological advancements. Here, we discuss how the long-term evolution of viruses is determined by the choices to balance the lytic and non-lytic modes of reproduction. We propose that beneficial virus-cell interactions may be more frequent or preferred outcomes in the long-term evolution of viruses than virus-mediated killing of host cells. To explain our viewpoint, we invoke Janus, the two-faced Roman god of beginnings, transitions, and time. One of his faces looks to the future, the other to the past. Our goal is to understand the evolutionary dilemma that viral lineages face, whether to kill or spare the host within the confines of survival, change, and time. But first, let us explore the differences between the traditional and emerging viewpoints. The predominant view considers viruses to be noxious and selfish genetic parasites. They are perceived as a significant threat to life. In fact, the word virus originates from Latin, meaning venom or poisonous emanation. Viruses are highly diverse in their genetics and morphology. The infective forms of the viruses, the viriums, show a multitude of different forms that are differently distributed between archaeoviruses, bacterial viruses, and eukaryoviruses, viruses, which are viruses affecting archaea, bacteria, and eukaryotes, the three domains of cellular life. Thanks to recent technological advancements and the effort of many virologists worldwide, we are just starting to understand the complex roles that viruses play in the biosphere. We are now aware of the existence of giant viruses, the abundance and diversity of viruses, and also that viral genes, genetic fragments, or even full-length viral genomes can frequently populate cellular organisms. Thus, viruses can apparently coexist with cells. Viruses can also form symbiotic associations with them. These interactions are interesting as they can influence organisms separated by large evolutionary distances and that are hard to visualize under a microscope as they do not always yield the classical symptoms of viral infection. Such virus cell interactions have therefore likely been underestimated historically, especially because there is more pressure to study viruses that directly or indirectly impact humans. One example of a multi-layered virus cell interaction is that of viruses influencing the archaeal and bacterial microbiota of eukaryotes. In this example, viruses can indirectly influence humans by directly interacting or integrating into the genomes of their archaeal and bacterial species that are members of the human microbiota. Viruses depend on the existence of a cellular environment to reproduce. Consequently, viruses that engage in excessive killing can drive their cellular host to extinction and will not survive. The destructive lytic mode of virus propagation must therefore be tempered and balanced by non-lytic modes of dormancy and dependency, which manifest through virus latency and symbiosis. Propagation is the spread of viral genetics through rupture opening of membranes, which is known as lysis. Propagation also occurs through exocytosis and transport. However, milder forms of virus propagation exist. Lysis may lead to killing of host cells and hence cells are constantly engaged with the pressure to combat and overcome their viruses. 
Lysis is therefore a great source of evolutionary innovation in both cells and viruses, including major milestones in cellular history. Dormancy is the robust state of covert existence occurring through reversible cellular or genetic integration. Dormancy, which fosters latency, can provide fitness advantages to host cells. For example, virus integration into bacterial chromosomes is known to enhance virulence of bacterial species and is also a mechanism of phage-mediated bacterial gene regulation. Dependency is the intimate and inescapable association of dissimilar entities that often occurs in symbiosis. For example, a recent study reported direct virus metazoan symbiosis limiting pathogenic bacterial growth on mucosal surfaces, a phenomenon apparently conserved from cinerians to humans. We propose, based on historical considerations and recent empirical evidence, that beneficial virus-cell interactions may be preferred outcomes in the long-term evolution of viruses. Thus, non-lytic modes of viral existence may balance the more destructive lytic mode. One bold direction for the future will be to take control over switching the lytic and non-lytic modes of viral reproduction for medical and therapeutic purposes.